I can hardly contain my excitement. One day in newspaper class, I will discover we will be covering the Bonita Vista High School Otaku Club's Moe Made Cosplay Gaming Cafe in the cafeteria, where students dressed as stylized maids will play board games with patrons. My new friend Ruby, who's on the newspaper with me, is doubly excited to see what would happen there. She's the one actually writing the story. I'm just there to see all the people I stopped associating with in middle school. Ruby is everything they are not. She looks normal. Her eyes are devilish, and her style is white hot. She could easily be in any of the trendy indie bands of early 2011. She applies her red lipstick with the sort of grin that indicates to me she smells blood and she is hungry. <laughs> the excursion is to begin soon. Tagging along are five to eight of Ruby's other friends, ASB kids, preppy AP student types who got their first Lexus at age 15, ready with forks and knives to observe and feast upon something they're ambivalent and superior to. We were hip kids in 2011. We wore H&M and Urban Outfitters, our V-necks deeper than our faux leather jackets were black. <laughs> that was the group, and that was me. And it is a far cry from our subjects. They often showed up to school half in costume or dressed in Hot Topic mall punk or Cole's Bargain Bin t-shirt and jeans, looks that I had long since abandoned. Despite the fact that we sporadically partake in our anime, we are way different than the Uber fans. We are not the outcasts. They are. All the kids we'll be seeing today are just a microscopic part of a number of young people just stricken with a deep devotion to the American anime subculture. I know them as weeaboos, the next level fans of Japanese manga, video games, and anime. They don't just watch anime, they consume it with a zealous fervor. At our school, the shogun of the weeaboos <laughs> is Tessa. Tessa is the most zealous. She is the girl wearing a kimono to the homecoming dance. She is the one who talks loudly about yaoi, gay anime porn, in the middle of class. Earlier that day, Tessa asked her English teacher if she can do a book report on an extended fan fiction I have never heard of, based on an anime I have never heard of, uh, by some fandom celebrity I have never heard of. The story deals with a, uh, a non-canon, not in the official piece, pairing or shipping, as in relationshiping, of two particularly well-groomed and non-threatening femboys in one of her favorite series. We all started out on Pokemon or Dragon Ball Z or Sailor Moon. <laughs> to me, that was just part of the uh, elementary school mainstream. <laughs> However, when middle school rolls around, it becomes clear to me that I have to start figuring out who I'm going to be for the rest of K-12 life. <laughs> Back then, I loved Legos and superheroes more than life itself. My favorite band was Queen. I spent every weekend hanging out with my mom. <laughs> I wore what she brought home for me from the Coles bargain bin. My popular elementary school companions left me for smoking pot and punk music. I just couldn't keep up with them. During our class breaks, hanging out in the lunch area, not having a clue about the dead Kennedys, MySpace, bisexuality. <laughs> so I started hanging out with the weeaboos. We played Kingdom Hearts, we watched Death Note, we read Shonen Jump, and they were my friends. Until I went to a birthday party of one of the guys in the group. I'd really been looking forward to it, but when I got there, it was seven of us in a, a huge room, over-decorated with streamers and custom Lego spacecraft. The parents watched over us closely, and when they weren't, we were talking about tentacle porn over pizza and Mountain Dew. As I was shoveling the Naruto-themed birthday cake down my face, I realized 
we were doubling down on a childhood ethos. I threw out all the Legos and action figures I had when I moved, and I stopped hanging out with my mom. I lost weight, I cut my hair, and started dressing myself. I made a new friend, Ruby, and joined up with her gang. My new friends and I were the savvy alternative kids. We were in the know when it came to the internet. <laughs> Things the mainstream hadn't even picked up on yet was our bread and butter. Ruby specifically, I couldn't keep up with all the stuff she was constantly showing us. Seeing the YouTube videos of Midwestern anime fans with cat ears and tails on, doing things like freaking out while buying obsessively large amounts of foam and rolling around in it. It was like a freak show. And, well, they reminded me of my old friends. I couldn't help but join in the laughter with the new ones. So we make our way to the Bonita Vista High School Otaku Club's Moe made cosplay gaming cafe in the cafeteria. We assumed it would be like mm, the Titanic sinking meets a uh, massive animal escape from the zoo. There would be cosplayers, uh, Cheeto fingered mouth breathers, uh, dancing to sugary J pop power ballads. Catastrophic social failure. Perhaps we could add to the canon of YouTube videos when we record this epic fail. It wasn't cliche to use that term back then. <laughs> While Tessa was the shogun of the weeaboos, the student body still laughs at her proud yet messy attempt to sing the Pokemon theme song during a lunchtime karaoke contest. I have serious doubt she could ever get this shindig right, let alone not completely embarrass herself. When we're walking in, Ruby and I reference the video she has shown me. The ASB2 kids, too, crack their own jokes, uh, tap at iPhones, tweeting and Facebooking. It's strange how mundane it is. Yes, there's cosplayers. Yes, they don't have anything spectacular going on. Their idea of a cafe is a handful of chips, uh, cup of noodles, Japanese soft drinks, and. Yes, they're playing card games in Nintendo DS and engaging in their strange weeaboo dialect. But really, they're just teenage weeaboos having teenage weeaboo fun. There's no outrageous folly. There's nothing begging to be ridiculed in the mass media coliseum of YouTube. It's a bunch of awkward-looking kids in a dreary cafeteria, talking shop, eating snacks. Still, the others can hardly contain their amusement. I follow suit as the handsome group of uniformly and expensively dressed ASB officers hear Tessa, the ringleader, discussing cosplay, wearing a fake, weather, fake leather warrior dominatrix made costume that she herself constructed. Unfortunately, Tessa isn't in the kind of shape that would get her cast in a teen drama on the CW. Yet, she wore her look with the confidence and grace of a prima ballerina. My laughter starts to subside as I make eye contact with my old friends who earnestly smile and wave me over. I realize that I was so close to being a part of this group. I could have been one of them. I could have been one of the cosplayers with a DS. I could have been one of the waiters even. And I would have been genuinely thrilled to be there. Instead of laughing with a group of friends I was nervously trying to impress, while well, they're exchanging nasty tweets with each other about my old friends who were serving Funyuns and playing chess with girls wearing cat ear headbands. Soon, the overt judgment from Ruby and the ASB kid subsides. Tessa graciously thanks Ruby as she is happy her club will get exposure. It won't be the smear piece that Ruby wanted because nothing shocking is happening and the advisor wouldn't allow it anyways. Ruby meekly offers a few jokes as an epilogue and I meekly laugh in agreement, though 
I suspect we're laughing for different reasons. We muster a smile at each other as if it were for the same. All's not lost for her, however. The ASB kids all come up with a fun fan plan for the night that I'm not invited to. A genuine smile returns on her face. She offers to give me a ride home, but I decline. Instead, I walk home, greeted by parents who pester me about staying in on a Friday night. When I finally retreat to my room, I pull out the Neon Genesis Evangelion box set Tessa loaned me years ago, and I consume the anime with a zealous fervor. A year later, Tessa will be at a prestigious LA art school, and I'll be alone at the community college across the street. Give it up for Vito Stefano. Yeah.